chapter called natural resources so natural resources are those which are freely available to us from the atmosphere and sometimes they may be exhaustible due to human activity sometimes they may be inexhaustible so uh, we live on the earth our mother earth our mother earth is the only planet where life exists and this feature makes us significantly distinct from other planets so we always want to retain this significant feature or special feature of earth so to for earth is the only planet where life exists then for life to exist they need to be cert- some certain factors so what are those factors for the life to be continuously existing they are temperature water and food the temperature needs to be in control they cannot be extreme high or extreme cold then water needs to be there because water is again a basic need of life then food without food we cannot survive then animals and plants also cannot survive without food so in the earth if life to exist there needs to be key factors temperature water and food then we also need, along with these key factors we also need resources from the earth and energy from the sun so along with the life and for the life to exist we need key factors along with these key factors we need resources from the earth and energy from the sun so what are these resources from the earth they are land water and air so land is available to us water is available and air is available so we have there should be proper balance between these three so suppose taking the examples consider this is the diagram of an earth this is earth so this is surrounded by air always this is always surrounded by air so this air which surrounds the surface of the earth is called the atmosphere then the earth outer layering of the earth the crust of the earth is called lithosphere so the air surrounding the earth is called atmosphere the outer crust is called lithosphere then earth is constituted of 75% of water so this 75% water zone is called hydrosphere so the air surrounding the earth is atmosphere the outer crust of the earth is lithosphere and the water content is 75% it covers earth is covered by 75% water water is present both on the ground and as well as underground so 75% of the earth surface is composed of water this water can be in the form of either drinking water or sea water or either ice caps glaciers anything either frozen or solid or anything so these three zones together constitute the life supporting zones so these life supporting zones are also known as biosphere atmosphere lithosphere hydrosphere together constitute the life supporting zones and they are known as biosphere so air coming to air air is very much necessary you know this was about land and water you now coming to the air air if there is no air we cannot breathe we need oxygen to right for living for our life so this atmospheric air is a mixture of many gases so major gases present in this atmosphere are nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and water vapor what is water vapor the water which is evaporated by the sun in the form of droplets and goes into the sky is water vapor so earth is the only planet where there is lot of air and water in the air also in the earth there is lot of oxygen content whereas in venus and mars the total surface of venus and mars is covered by 97% of carbon dioxide that is why life on venus and mars is not possible because human beings need oxygen to survive if there is no oxygen we cannot survive that is the reason we survive on the earth because there is oxygen on it then the cells of the body of the human beings need oxygen to break down glucose and convert into energy so both, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells need oxygen to break down glucose and convert them into energy so everybody needs oxygen then oxygen now coming to carbon dioxide then carbon dioxide is involved in the process of combustion what is combustion fossil fuels like petroleum diesel oil or coal anything when they burn they evolve carbon dioxide they give out carbon dioxide so in this process of combustion always carbon dioxide is evolved in the atmosphere but even though there is so much amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere it only accounts 2% of the total gases of the atmosphere understood so combustion is the process where carbon dioxide gas is evolved but since even though there is this much amount of carbon dioxide is present in the air it accounts for only 2% of the total atmospheric gases then what happens to this carbon dioxide there will be fixing of this carbon dioxide in two methods how the carbon dioxide is fixed in two methods i will tell you 
in green plants. Green plants inhale carbon dioxide and they need carbon dioxide for the process of making food or photosynthetic activity. So how? So green plants in the presence of sunlight convert carbon dioxide into glucose for the food and energy purpose. So carbon dioxide is converted into glucose in the presence of sunlight in plants. This is one way carbon dioxide is fixed in the atmosphere. Then next in animals. Carbonates in the form of carbonates, carbon dioxide is present. You know the shell of the animals, right? Like snail and many animals have shells, and then sea has many shelled animals. So the shell of those animals is made up of carbonate. It is a compound of carbon dioxide. So in this way, carbon dioxide is fixed in two ways in the atmosphere. And carbon dioxide accounts for two percent of the atmospheric air. Then, do you think what is the role of atmosphere in the climate control? Atmosphere is necessary, right? Air is necessary, and how this air is being controlled in this total climate? Because sometimes we have extreme hot climate, then sometimes we have extreme rains, then extreme cold, and how this is being controlled? The climate and the air, how they are maintaining a balance? So as you know, air is a bad conductor of heat. So in the daytime, when there are extreme temperatures, the presence of air prevents us from getting those extreme heat rays. Then in the night times, as the temperature decreases in the night times this hot air from the atmosphere escapes into the space so the evenings are colder and the days are hotter but one more thing you remember is sun sun is a star right how much distance earth is far from the sun the same amount of distance moon has from the earth sun so the distance of the earth and the moon is similar from the sun it accounts for equal amount of distance is there between the sun and the earth and then earth and the equal amount of distance is there between sun and the earth and sun and the moon then moon has the temperature of minus 190 degrees centigrade to 110 degrees centigrade even though it has the same distance from the sun like that of the earth but the temperature is very colder in moon but whereas in earth because of the presence of atmosphere and the atmospheric gases there is always a man balance is between maintained for the air so this is about role of atmosphere is climate control so we shall move to the next topic next topic in air will be movement of air or wind so changes in the atmosphere why changes in the atmosphere occur changes in the atmosphere are due to heating of the air and formation of water and vapor due to radiation emitting from the earth the air will be heated due to rays from the sun the air will be heated or due to the formation of water vapor water getting evaporated and contained converting into water droplets is water vapor so due to the presence of heating of the air and formation of the water vapor there will be changes in the atmosphere right so water vapor how it is formed it is formed by two activities either like heating of the water bodies like rivers seas lakes anything then activities of the living organisms or any human activity so water vapor is formed due to two activities heating of the water bodies or activity of the living organisms to know the movement of the flow of air we tell you a simple experiment take a glass jar or a beaker burn a candle over it light the flame so take an incense stick incense stick is also known as agarbatti so take an agarbatti and three situations are there first situation put it exactly above the flame to the edge of the flame and see the direction in which the smoke moves next situation keep it little higher from the flame of the candle then see in which direction it moves the smoke then keep it away from the candle then see in which direction it moves so then take a beaker glass jar put a candle light it take an incense stick or agarbatti so put the agarbatti immediately to the edge of the lighting candle flame of the candle see in which direction the smoke moves put it next situation put it a little higher above the flame of the candle see in which direction the smoke moves then put it away from the flame of the candle then see in which direction the smoke moves these three directions help you to know the movement of the air in different conditions like movement of the air when there is heat movement of the air when there is no heat so due to radiations present in the heat air because air has some uv rays all the greenhouse gases and everything right so due to the radiations present in the air air is heated so when the air is heated the air is heated on total atmosphere means on the total surface of the earth air is heated above the land and air is heated above the water bodies also there is air everywhere in the atmosphere right so the air present above the land gets heated faster okay 
air is present in the atmosphere due to the radiations from the sun or any other water radiations or any other radiations, UV rays, greenhouse gases or anything, due to these radiations, the air over the land gets heated faster when compared to air above the water body. Understood? Air above the land gets heated faster than the air above the water bodies because the water temperature is colder than the land temperature. So then what happens? So the due to radiations, air is heated, then land air gets heated faster than the water bodies. So what happens when the land air is heated, heated, it goes up and converts into water vapor. So there will be no air on the land. Then what happens? The air present over the sea will gradually move into the land. Understood? So when due to radiations, when the air over the land is heated, it gets evaporated in the form of water vapor or goes away into the sky. Then after that, the air over the water is heated. In this way, in this situation, when there is no air over the land, the air over the water bodies present on the over the water bodies or seas moves to the land. So this creates an area of low pressure. This is called an area of low pressure. When there is no air on the land, due to the presence of excess heat rays, radiation, the air has flown away into the space or sky. So that time the air present over the water body moves to the area where land is there. So the air creates an area of low pressure. That is called a low pressure area. It is usually present in the coastal areas where there are not of water bodies like seas or oceans. Then what is the definition of wind? So the movement of air from one region to another region is called movement of wind. The definition of wind is movement of air from one region to another region. So when the air is heated, the air is heated everywhere on the earth, on the land and on the water also. The air present over the land gets heated faster and evaporates. Then after that the air over the water body gets heated because the water bodies are colder. So when there is no air on the land, the water body's air move into the land area. So that creates an area of low pressure. But now coming to the next reverse situation, this happens in the daytime. Now coming to the evening time, the temperature gets colder. When the temperature gets colder, the air above the land gets colder faster than the air above the water. So the air above the water is warmer when compared to the air above the land in the evenings. So this is the two differences. So this happens only in the coastal areas. These are the low pressure areas. So this is the flow of air or wind. So what are the factors that influence the wind? The rotation of the earth may sometimes affect the wind. Hot wind, low, low wind, the low pressure areas it may affect the rotation of the earth because always earth is rotating. Then mountain ranges sometimes the cities or places situated near the mountains are cooler. So the presence of mountains may influence the wind flow. So this is about movement of wind. Now let's move to the rain, water. 